tell Tony it's a real money in the room. You are now tuned into the Bob Report. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm blessed. I can't complain. How you feel? I'm okay, man. Uh, thank you for coming to sit down today with the Bob Report, man. And, you know, for the people who don't know, tell everybody who you are. My name is Kevin Spencer, man. Kevin Spencer. Um, where you from, Mr. Spencer? <laughs> I'm from Fort Worth, you know what I'm saying? South side of Fort Worth, neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? But when I say South side neighborhood, I mean the whole South. We ain't got no bottoms, no tops when I was raised. Like, it's the whole entire South. So the, the, the neighborhood, um, is that a particular part of the South Side? Yeah, it's the neighborhood I grew up in. It's like, it consists of a six to eight block radius from uh, Glen Gordon to Roberts, uh, off Richmond, I mean off Riverside. You know what I'm saying? We got our own little, our own little old town right there in the block. Is it, is it um, or was it family oriented? Very family oriented, very family oriented. Still today, most people down are family. Well, they moving all of us out, a lot of the messengers are moving in and, you know what I'm saying, taking over. So, hold up, hold up, I don't mean taking over, we giving it to them, we gave them that land. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, I can't say they taking over. Talking about the, the Hispanics. You better believe it. Yeah, they they didn't came in and, 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 and built up a lot of stuff and uh it, it look it looks it looks pretty uh pretty pretty good over there. Yeah, it does, it does, it does. But you know, it it we have to have to go through cycles and changes, you know, for that to happen. And now, uh back in the day we could buy a house down there in the hood for for twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. Now down there in the hood them houses two hundred thousand and all that right now. In the neighborhood? <laughs> in the neighborhood. On the oh, block where I had, I probably had, in the hood, I probably had probably about 10 to 15 houses. At one time? No, not at one time. I had probably like three to four at one time. You had 10 to 15 houses in this one neighborhood? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, baby girl? What's up? You all right? Yeah. <laughs> you used to box, man. Uh, you know, I heard you got so good that you used to go to different neighborhoods and, and, and fight their best opponent. That that was with me growing up, man. My big homies, we we going to squabble. You know, I was always the youngest cat on the block, so we're going to squabble. They're going to make sure you got something. And, and they get into it with some other niggas, and they got a little homie. I'm going to squabble they little homie. And it's just how it was back then. And then I got so, so, so infatuated with... with you know the the art of boxing. You know what I'm saying. I, I'm not a, I'm not a boxer. I'm not, I fought a little amateur fights. You know what I'm saying. But I'm I just feel like I'm a pugilist. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get your skills from, man? The hood, man. Yeah. The hood. I did a little training. Donald K. I, I I did a little training with Donald back in the day, and uh, uh, my guy Robert guy. He's from the hood. You know, I did, I did, a, I did a little training with a couple of known cats back in the day. But we gonna, we gonna put them on in, in the hood. We did you ever lose a fight? Have you ever lost a fight? Yeah. In the gloves? Gloves with that, with in that the gloves? Glove. No, I ain't lost nothing in the gloves. But yeah, I don't lost a fight. I used to get skimped up. My big cousin used to skim me up. <laughs> My brother used to put me out there with older cats, and and and, and if. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. And he ain't gonna let him hurt me, but he gonna make he gonna let me get out there. Yeah. Especially if I be done started. You know, I was bad, man. I was, I was, I was. They called me a little messy. I was in the hood. I'm always in the stone. Yeah, yeah. Big Tex gave me that name. R. I. P. Big Tex neighborhood. Big Tex gave me. That. So, growing up in Fort Worth in the hood, what are some of the the things you used to see when you were coming up? Coming up on the block. Man, dope fiends, prostitutes, jack boys, that's that, that's what raised me in the hood. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what I came up on. So as soon as you hit the dough, you come outside, you seeing prostitutes, pimps, D boys. I ain't gonna say prostitutes, I'm just saying like on, if I'm up on Riverside I see the prostitutes, but down in my hood like you said, like we said previously, it was like real family oriented. Mm -hmm. But they gonna be getting their hustle on. They hustling on. 
It was probably nine times out of ten with my T J on after hustling. Your mom saying? was a hustler. Yeah. It's in my book, man. It's in my book. Mom's mom's is mom's strong, man. Mom's strong. What type of hustler was your mom? Uh, the ultimate hustler. Mom's had it all. Mom's one of the first persons. I ain't gonna say first first woman. I'm gonna say one of the first persons is people, men and women. Probably I seen uh, cook crack. You know what I'm saying? In the test tube, a lot of cats didn't even know how to cook crack. Moms was cooking it when the Cubans when the Cubans came up and went to hustling and doing all that. Yeah, moms, moms was cooking it work for them. So you you <laughs> the first person you saw cook crack was your mom. Yeah. My mom's. It's interesting, man. Yeah. Did that, did that did that play a part in your like your mental when you went outside? If you seeing that on the inside of your house when you come outside, did that grow you up fast? Yeah, I was grown before my time. Just just my environment did that with me being the youngest and being so nosy and so eager and so you know what I'm saying, gung ho on one now. Have what what I see my my big cousin the Dreons and and, and 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 youngster and guys like that big funk and guys like that me seeing them after I getting it you know what I'm saying they really lit a fire under me and made me you know what I'm saying who I am not to get a devil no glory but you know that's that's that was part of my upbringing. Got gotcha. you. You know growing up in Fort Worth man around the time that that you were coming up uh, gangs were prevalent. Yeah. Um, like real Crips, real Bloods. Uh, did you ever join a gang? Yeah, man, a gang. <laughs> I, I can't say that I joined a gang. I just. I say, uh, I'm not. The, the, giant, the gang, the gang that, 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 that was supposed to have been the gang for me joining was. was the Hoovers, five dudes. My brother Eric Spencer, he was, you know what I'm saying, a Hoover. He brought he brought that Hoover stuff to, you know what I'm saying, I hood. So but when the first album I wanted to be just a clean nigga hustling. I wasn't trying to do no gang bang. And then, you know, my my, my brother get killed in ninety three. And it like flipped that switch and it was on ever since. With the gang bang. With the gang bang. But my brother was was five loose, so I'm full Trey. You made your own name when you started or after your brother passed? I would say, because I, I kind of lost it for a minute, you know what I'm saying? It's like I didn't care because it was always, I felt like I was next. You know, I was on the time set, you know what I'm saying? And when my brother got killed, when my brother got killed, it made me, you know, want to fight police, want to do something to the police because of, of me not knowing that, you know, every law ain't like this law that did that. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of messed up at first, but, you know, to God be the glory, he turned all that around. Why did you join, though? Or why did you get involved with that? If you knew how to fight, you ain't need no protection. Just a neighborhood thing? It wasn't just a neighborhood thing, because all my big homies ain't none of my big homies in no gang. Mm. The niggas that, that, that I come up under in the dope gang, in the hood, who I used to hustle with and all that, the Day Waynes, the Jimmy Woos, the, you know what I'm saying, the cats that was on this case with me, the older cats that was on this case with me. I never, they, they not even the gang. The younger cats that's in the case with me, they, they fall up under me. So, you know, of course they're in the gang, but my old heads wasn't, when, that was just something that I, I, I migrated to once I lost my brother because that was something that he was doing. Your brother was killed by a police officer. Um, yeah. Can you explain what happened that day? Well, earlier that day, I'm gonna go, let me take you back from, from when the day first started. Earlier that day, I had, uh, this is when uh, the polo boots first come out. You remember the big polo boots with the buckle across? Yes, sir. Everybody would buy them. I think they were probably the first $200 pair of shoes or whatever after. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had some, I had a pair. And I had I already I grew my brother. My brother probably stood probably about like five ten, five eleven. Probably had about four percent body fat, cut up, <laughs> looked like a real African. You know what I'm saying? The, the cat, 
could do anything. Uh, basketball, football, he dunking at five ten. He, you know, the nigga just he, he was he was an athlete. So uh, he come by my baby mama house. <clears throat> I'm at my baby mama house. I'm out You know, I was I was still I was on by then. I was on. Baby girl, what's what's up, what's up, baby? I'm making a nigga come hit you in your job, I'm darling. Not about you, so about yeah, you I'm trying to. You gotta stop closing the door, opening and closing the door. So they stay in the house, nigga. Yeah, you better stay in the house if I slap it. <laughs> stay in that lap with my baby. So, uh, where was we at, man? I'm sorry, man. Uh, you was explaining how athletic your brother was. Oh, yeah, cat, cuz, I'm talking about cuz, athletic, ducking basketballs at, 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 at 5'10 and all that. So, with, with that being said, he was good with his hands. <laughs> he, he gonna bust that pistol, not to get the devil no glory. He's gonna, he gonna, you know, he was, he was, he was what America feared. Yeah. He was what America feared at that time. You know what I'm saying? At that time. He's what America feared, a black man that just really didn't give a damn. You know, excuse my language. But uh, that day he come by my baby mom's house. I wasn't smoking no weed or nothing. I'm hustling real good. I'm already getting money, you know what I'm saying? So uh, he come by my baby mom's house, and uh, I had just went and bought me another pair of polo boots because I had scuffed those. They had like a little scuff on when I was going out. I said, man, her, you can have these. And he, he the type of, he fly in the mud all the time. He grabbed and put them on right there. He had on some shorts. I think he had on some Jabo shorts and some polo boots. And I think no shirt, you know, he cut up. This this back in 93, like I said. So he, he, he got a big joint behind his back. I wasn't even smoking. I was like, man, give me the joint. He said, nigga, you don't smoke. I said, nigga, give me the joint, nigga. I'm going to smoke. Who? Well, fired up in front of me. So I grabbed a joint, fired up in front of me. I smoked the joint. We still here laughing, BS. He leave her and go pick up my homeboy now. I'm so high, you know, I don't smoke. I go in the house and go to sleep. I may stay asleep maybe three, four hours. You know what I'm saying? I wake up. I'm finna go to stop six over to my other, to my other baby mama house. I'm finna go to stop six to my other baby mama house. She was, well, she's not my baby mama. She's my girlfriend at that point, but she became my baby mama the next year when, when my second daughter was born. My first baby was born in 93. So um, I wake up, I get in my Jeep. That's when I had the Jeep. I had the Jeep with the, you know, the little, the little bitty Jeeps with the, with the wide wheels and all that. Yeah. Yeah, with the 415s in the back. So I had a Jeep. I jump in my Jeep. I'm on my way to stop six. Every time I pass by someone, they trying to flag me down. I ride through the south. They try to flag me down. I keep going. You know, you know me. I'm thinking I'm all that. I ain't got time to be talking. I'll holler at y'all in a minute. So a uh, friend of the family named Vet, Vet Douglas, she had a Camaro. She tried to flag me down. I pass by, I keep going. She get in behind me, chase me down, flashing the light. Kev, 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 Kev. I pull up, that ain't Vet, what's up? She said, why you ain't at the hospital? I said, hospital for what? She said, uh, Eric just got shot. I said, huh? Yeah, Eric just got shot. I said, nigga playing with my brother like that? Nah, the police shot it. I say, dang. So I turn around, I go straight to the to the hospital. When I get to the hospital, it's like a real somber moment. It's quiet, everybody's standing around. You know what I'm saying? I jump out the car, I jump, I pull up, I pull right up in the in the mercy room, right there at Peter Smith. I jump out the car, I walk over. As soon as I get to the door, the laws, uh, uh, uh Kevin, we can't let you in. We can't let you in, Kevin. I'm like, what you Kevin? How do you loud? Get out of my face, man. Where my brother at? You know what I'm saying? And then one of the little homies, I think it was Pooh. Pooh Bunny Rabbit. He say, uh, cause he dead. I say, huh? He said, yeah, he dead. So then, it kind of, it messed me up so so much. First thing I thought was where my TJ on at. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, by that time, I heard him bringing my mama out. My mama crying. You know what I'm saying? Me not knowing at this time that my mama watched the police shoot my brother. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, dang, I'm not knowing this. So I'm, mama, you all right? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I go through the motions with her. And uh, they take her downtown and make a statement. And then I finally, after that, I gathered and got all the intel about the situation that I could get. 
So yeah, that 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 was that was the turning point and the starting point of my crippling. How did that make you feel about law enforcement? I was bitter, man. I was bitter for a long time. Uh, my cousin and I would would, would would plot to do things to, to, you know what I'm saying, do stupid things to, 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 excuse me, people in law enforcement or whatnot. But the good Lord, you know what I'm saying, saw, saw a nigga through his, 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 his ignorant thoughts. You mentioned that um, after your brother passed, uh, that you hit the switch, and that's when you really started seriously crippling. Um, how serious was it? <laughs> how serious was it? We lost, <laughs> we lost brothers, we lost homies, we lost. Cash with life sense that I never coming back, man. It was serious. Life and death serious. Mm -hmm. If it can get any serious than that. Yeah. I don't think it get no serious than that. <laughs> not not in this not right now. <laughs> yeah. Um like during that time, what was your what was your mental like? At that point I I really didn't care. I had gave up. Did you care if you lived or died? I wanted to live because I, I didn't want to I didn't want to see my mama hurt like I seen her hurt when she lost my brother. I had to bury my brother. I had to I had to uh, go pick out my brother's casket. I ain't Cynthia and uh, my ain't, my ain't red. They took me to go pick out my brother's casket down at Gregory Spencer's funeral. Now I've never it's that's the. You know, I was in there when, when we had to pick out my grandbaby's casket, you know, not too long ago, but at the age, at, the, at that early age of uh, 18, I just turned 18 when, uh, 17. Yeah, I had, I was just turned 18, I just turned 18 when, when Eric got killed. And uh, for me, ha for me having to, to, to Pick out the man outfit that, that he's gonna be buried in. For this man to, for me to have to pick out, uh, for me to have to pick out uh, this man casket. It was rough. Made me. It made me. <laughs> it made me age a little, a little, a little faster. Also. Gotcha. Um. Billy Ray Maddox, the Douglas family. Boot Nose, Bobby Wayne Reed. What comes to mind when you hear these names? Okay, name them up one by one. I'm gonna tell you what what what, what comes to mind. Okay, uh, Boot Nose, Willie, OG, Smooth Dude, Ladies Man, Millionaire, and the Killer. Bobby Wayne Reed. Businessman. Businessman. In every aspect. The Douglas family. Them guys there are from, you know, those, those guys are right there from my neighborhood. I always much respect to, to all them guys. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> they were, they were the the, the, the family of the of Fort, of Fort Worth. Mm. They probably was the first family, especially in the drug organization in Fort Worth. With them being so big and being so many brothers. Gotcha. Billy Ray Maddox. The goat. <laughs> <laughs> The goat. The goat. My mama say, my mama, my mama, when they, when they knock Billy, mama them was sad when they knock Billy. They say, mama them say, Billy was making about a million some a month, man. A million a month. A million a month. At least a million or more a month, they say. <laughs> I heard some the stories, goat. man. Uh, they say the, the 
the Texas Motor Speedway, that land is, is owned by Billy Ray Maddox. I heard that. I know Billy had a lot of land. But if, if, they, if they build the Texas Motor Speedway on it, it's not owned by Billy. The white folks ain't letting no Negro yeah. <laughs> own no land like that. <laughs> no, sir. How old were you when you, when you picked up your first um, sack? Of what? Dope. Dope what? Weed, cocaine? You know, back then, when I was, when I was a kid, it wasn't crack yet. It wasn't crack yet? No. <laughs> I was born in 75. I first sold my first 50 pack of cocaine. I think my mama was asleep. And, uh, and one of the people from around the corner from, from the next street came by and wanted a 50 pack of cocaine. It was like a, in a little small bag. I served in that. I think I, I eight, nine. I wasn't 10. You, you said what? <laughs> I'm probably like 82, 83. You was like eight or nine years old? It's 80, it was like 83. I was like eight or nine. 83, 84. I was eight or nine. I, I sold my first 50 pack of cocaine. We always sold weed. Mama sold weed, so she'd be asleep. But what you want, man? Uh, kid, give me a, a dime sack of that bowl. Uh, give me a 50 pack of that. Oh, man. Eight, seven, eight, nine. We was running a gambling house, man. Mama let us run the game when we was eight, nine, ten years old, gambling with her and the, my uncles and the homies and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you get this, the, the, the cocaine from? It was my mama's work. Mom's work. She was asleep. I just held it for her. Did you get that Not that money? she was, not that she had me selling it. Nah, I was. Yeah. Mama sleep, man. What you want? Man, tell her I want a 50 pack, yeah. Man, her, man. I go, boo, boo, her man. Yeah, How often I, did you do that? How often? Yeah. It wasn't a daily thing, but it wasn't a monthly thing or weekly thing neither. You know what I'm saying? Whenever necessary. Not that she would have me working, but I would, if she was busy or wasn't there, I would, I would serve her. So you, you were an adolescent when you learned that you, when you already knew how to sell things. I was a child. You was a child. Adolescence is almost an adult. I was yeah. a child. You was a child. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. But it wasn't. It wasn't that. It wasn't that I was. That she was intentionally grooming me to be this, the next. That wasn't. That wasn't the case. I don't want to say I was a product of my environment, but. I kind of was a product of my environment. You know and this is before crack even hit. Before crack hit, yeah. Yeah. Before crack hit, yeah. What were you doing when, when, the, when crack actually hit for work? Man, I really had my aspiration of playing football and, and boxing and all that. I was active in sports, but I was still coming home to the hood. How long were you operating a successful business in the hood? Which, which successful business? <laughs> how old of them? The, 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 uh, the spots? Yes, sir. And how many did you have? When I was on that level or when I first started? When you first started. When I first started, we didn't have no houses. We was hand-to-hand -hand combat. Tony, 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 uh, Tony, Tony and them had the block then. Tony Douglas and them, that's when mm -hmm. they had the block then. The Douglases had the block. Drell had the block. Um, you know, me, Jimmy Wu, I'm up under all, all of them. I'm the, I'm the baby of the block. They don't even want me to do no hustling. They try to send me to school. Man, I don't want to go to school, look, Kevin. But I already had a taste of the hustling. I had to have it. And uh, we was hand-to-hand -hand combat. We was ready running the cars back then. There wasn't no traps. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And guys might get a, a, a boy and girl house, but they would have to move them so much because the, the laws would hit them so, you know what I'm saying, so fast. So when you, you, you move up in the ranks, you're doing your thing, um, 
when did you understand that you were the guy? And when did everybody else understand that? I never, I never, I never put myself as the guy, the younger guys around me would depict me as the guy. Dudes from the other side of town would depict me as the guy. I, uh, I wasn't even, I was hustling, it wasn't even hustling to save money. I was just hustling to live in the crib and stuff like that. When me and Boots was riding every day, I'm gonna hustle and grind, woo -woo -woo and do my thing. Until one day, uh, you know, we had the Monaco apartments over there off of Lancaster. Mm -hmm. We had a few spots in Stop Six. We, we probably was, 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 was the, some of the few crib niggas that, that hustled in that area. You know what I'm saying? But that was the adrenaline rush. That was our thing. We thought that we, we, we can go, we're going to hustle wherever we want to hustle. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we did. And uh, I was in the Ambassador Apartments one day. And it's in the book too. <laughs> I was in Ambassador do apartments one day, and uh, three blood cats been in the corner. Mm, I think two two of them still alive, and, and, and they know me, and I know them. And uh, when they been in the corner, first thing he said is, "Oh, he Ricky Snigger," you know what I'm saying? So when he did that, I'm sitting there with my brother's baby mama, and I'm sitting there with my baby mama. This when we wore the big clothes. Mm -hmm. We had the big clothes on. We had the, <laughs> I had, you know what I'm saying? But I had just lead a gun range. You know, I had my gun light. As soon as I turned 21, I went and got my gun lights because I never had a record. Yeah. So I had my gun lights. I probably was the first, well, I know I was the first young black man in Fort Worth to have his gun license. So I just left the, the shooting range, man. And it's three of them. And, and <laughs> it's one way in, one way out. So when they ride by me, in order for them to come back out, they gotta come back by me. You feel me? And 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 then with uh, when <laughs> when he bent the corner and, and, and called me and he ricked it. First thing my baby mama said was, "Come on, Kevin, she a blood." My baby mama's a blood. You know what I'm saying? I got uh, I got. Now, like four that, that happens often, man. In Fort Worth, a lot of the cross town. Uh, Stop six kid dad is be from the south side and vice versa. I got person. four. I got four baby mamas from Stop Six. See what I'm saying, man. <laughs> and so, uh, so she was like, "Come on, Kevin, come on." I like, man, I ain't going nowhere. Y'all chicken, y'all going over there? It was my sister chicken and and my baby mama. And uh, I made them go in the breeway. So as soon as dude get out the car, he. So, Hey, what you looking at me like there for, homie? This nigga out of California, supposed to be them niggas OG. Mm. I ain't, you know, I ain't gonna name no names. It's supposed to be them niggas OG, so he get out. What you looking at me like there for, homie? I, I up my thing and go to getting at him right then. You know what I'm saying? So they shooting, I'm shooting. But they shooting wild. They pop, 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 pop. You know what I'm saying? He run, they run out of bullets. They run off and lead this one little nigga. They run off and lead this one little nigga. And I run up to him and give it to him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he take off running. I'm out of bullets. One of the homies come bring me a pump. I jack the joint off, go to chasing the nigga. The nigga run up in uh, in these bras apartment. You know how the one bedroom and fifty apartments is, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? In the you know what I'm saying, in the in the in the poverty in, in the poverty field areas, how it looks. You can look at the front door and look right to the back of the, yeah. the, of the what you call it. So I jump in front of her door with that thing and I look in a, in a house, I see some red chucks, you know what I'm saying, all the way to the bedroom, but like hanging out after month by the bed. First thing she said was, now nah, Kevin, my kid's in here. I snap. I said, man, you go in here and kill this nigga, you go in the penitentiary forever. I said, all right, yeah, your kid's in here, all right. You you I don't know nothing. I don't, I, when I heard that, I jumped in the car and bounced. And this is how I knew my mama was a fool. <laughs> I'm glad that that that, that God has softened her heart, <laughs> but she's still a fool right now, though. But uh, I leave right there on Lancaster. Oh, look, now you know where Lancaster is. You know where the old uh, Footlock used to be. Yep. Right there on Lancaster in yep. Tyranny. Mm -hmm. I'm up going up Lancaster. I bust a left on Miller. This right after the shootout or whatever. I bust a left on Miller. 
By the time I get to Barry, mama calling my phone. I'm like, mom, what's up? She said, you know them boys got hit? They say two of them boys got hit. You know, soon as she say that, I go into defense mode. Man, they was shooting at me first, mama, some, 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 some. She said, I'm just telling you, I'm not worried about them. Excuse me. She said, I'm telling you, I'm not worried about them. F them. I hope they dead. They trying to kill you. They ought to be dead. This how I knew that. <laughs> mom, moms was on something different. I had a different kind of mom. <laughs> So uh, I was like, yes, ma'am, woo woo. So right now today, I still, still yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. And well, I ain't, never, I ain't never cussed in front of her, but I don't cuss in front of her. Man. So uh, that's when I, I realized that, that moms was unique. And that's when it all started. And I wasn't even trying to, I wasn't even trying to save money. And then after I, I thought I was gonna get to go to jail for shooting that boy. I went to the hood and started saving for my my bond. Mm -hmm. I looked up, I got 10,000 put up. 10,000 wasn't nothing to have. I done had 10,000 a hundred times, but I had 10,000 put up and I'm still playing with like 10 or 15 in the street with the work. I saved up to like about 40, 50,000 right quick in a matter of a month and a half, two months. I'm like, dang, you know what I'm saying? But then that's when, and that's also when I realized that these people knew I had shot that boy you know what i'm saying and the police never came one police jammed me up and was like uh spencer yeah we know you shot that boy nigga, i ain't shot nobody nigga. i don't know what you're talking about yeah we know you shot him but we ain't worried about it. we gonna leave you out here they gonna kill you i said they gonna kill who they gonna kill you I said niggas gonna be a body count he ain't killing me you know what i'm saying that was where my mind was at the time bro you know what i'm saying like i feel like i was that nigga, when you, when, you know, the question you asked earlier about being that nigga, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's because I was lost mentally, though. It wasn't because I was tough of them, but it was lost. I was lost mentally. I lost my way, and with losing my brother was, you know what I'm saying, a little additive to me losing my way. The fishbowl. Uh, what was the fishbowl, and did, did you and your people ever call it the fishbowl? Man, he, that fishbowl, I get hot every time I hear a nigga say the fishbowl. That ain't, man, that's the neighborhood. The fishbowl was the name of the investigation mm -hmm. that the police named the hood, the fishbowl. Come on, because of the, because of the way it's shaped on the map. You know what I'm saying? And we had like, like two way, like one way in. Like we had only uh, interest on each end. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I ain't with that fishbowl. We, I'm from the block neighborhood. Yes, sir. Um, well, you explained that they, they named it that because of the way it's shaped on the map. But y'all never called it that. Never. Uh, Tegan Broadwater, or T. How did he? Uh, how did he get in, man? How did he? How did he infiltrate a, a tight knit program like that? Well, he went in. He. There were, in the hood, it was different, different groups. So he infiltrated certain groups. My group, he never infiltrated. He never, he never came to, to the spot where, where, where our location was, most of my guys. A, a couple of my guys served him while they was on the street. But he's never, and he, he prayed on drug addicts. He'll, he'll get a drug addict and pay them to go, you know, he prayed on them, you know what I'm saying? But, uh... The dude has never, I've, I've never, I've never, I seen him, cause I told BB and all them other niggas, that's the police. But he brought, he sent one of my homeboys, he sent one of my homeboys to the spot. But actually he sent two people. First he sent a little nigga that, that I answered the door, the nigga like, uh, uh, I need, I need a uh, 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 quarter ounce. Is Kevin Spencer here? And he's sitting up talking to me. You know what I'm saying? My youngin wanted to eat him up, but I was like, nah, go on, come on, man, come on. I grabbed him, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? So uh, <laughs> he he sent that guy that day after I played back everything in my head, you know, and I was in solitary. It had me in solitary because uh, Broadwater and them said <laughs> that uh, I was reaching out, threatening people, you know what I'm saying? They better not be telling on me and I have something done to them and all that. 
So I did like about a year, almost right at a year in solitary confinement because of that, prior to going to court and everything. That's one of their tactics to try to break them. Um, other than him having large amounts of money to purchase drugs, how else did he get in? My niggas, some, some of my niggas, they was greedy, my nigga. They was selling this man 125 grams for $5,000 and he paying for it. You know what I'm saying? And they would come tell me, true enough, I probably would sell them the powder to cook it up. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I got, I got, I got the white boy over here, the white boy here, kid. Let me get, let me, let me get, let me, he, he trying to get a quarter. Let me get 125. You know, 125, I thought he said he's trying to get a quarter. I'm going to blow it up to 125. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to blow it up another 125 to make it a quarter. You know what I'm saying? So they was tricking the boy out of the money, but the boy was just building cases on him. And your initial thoughts of him was it you knew what it Not was? Not my initial thoughts. My thoughts all the way up until today. The man's a police. Ain't nobody coming. The man got his hat on backwards with his TCU shirt on and the beans. Man, this man the law. This man the law. You know what I'm saying? Any any white folk you deal with in the hood, you've been dealing with them in the hood since they was they come up. You know, you know they kids and woo yeah. woo. You don't just deal with random white folks in the hood. So all that he infiltrated. No, no, he didn't do that, none of that. He overpaid for bad drugs. Niggas was greedy. He overpaid for bad drugs. Niggas was greedy. And it cost that they cost it cost fifty something niggas time in the penitentiary for that. When did you um when did you feel like the the walls was closing in on you? Like, how long was he around before it, people started getting locked up? People wasn't getting locked up. I never felt the laws the was closed. I wasn't even here. They, they, as a matter of fact, the laws, when they hit, when they, when they come to get me the, the feds, they hit this house. I wasn't even here. I later turned myself in. Oh, you turned yourself in? Yeah. I didn't have a record. Only record I had was I had two uh, assault with bodily injury on a police officer. That was the only felonies I had, and I had that expunged and wiped away from my lawyer. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Glennis McGinty. You know what I'm saying? She. Oh, shout out Miss Glennis McGinty. Yeah, that's my baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's mama. Yeah, right now she coming if I need her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Was it a. Because I, I, for the people who don't know, you know what I'm saying, was it a, a clean sweep of 50 some people? What do you mean by a clean? Like, tell me what you mean like, by clean sweep. Did, when did people start disappearing, going to jail? Oh, no, they hit all, all the houses at one time at, from different agencies, everybody. It was a roundup that morning. And by probably noon, they had probably about 40 of us. They didn't have me, but they had 40 of us. And you turned yourself in? Yeah. I turned myself in probably like three, four days later. And what happened when, when, when you did that? Shit didn't go as planned like I thought. I thought if I turned myself in, with me never having a record, not being in trouble, being a business owner, and having, having um, being a homeowner and, and being rooted in the community as I was, you know, working with the youth as I was beforehand and all the, you know, all the old people around the hood loved me to death. I felt like, you know, I would get a, a bond. And you never got that bond? <laughs> nah, and I, and I had two paid lawyers, you know what I'm saying? So I, I it was, the fix was in from the beginning. And then I did, I did some of the stupidest, I did one of the stupidest things the stupid, the most stupidest things I ever did in my life, next to gang banging and selling drugs, I winked my eye at the uh, at the head agent of, of our case. Why you do that? Young, dumb, cocky, unintelligent, uninformed. What did that cost you? That wink. Fifteen years of my life. So when you turn yourself in, you don't get back out. No. For 15 years later? 13 and a half. What was the charge? Which ones? I started out, the first charge, the first charge they had me, they had me saying that I brought David Wayne some drugs. 
And that was the initial indictment. That was what they that was they went to the grand jury with the first time and got an indictment on. So with that indictment, I looked at the dates. I'm like, mm. and you know me, I'm an avid I'm an avid boxing fan. So it just so happened the date that they had that I brought that so, that a federal agent observed me bringing Day Wayne drugs. I was in Las Vegas, Nevada at a Floyd Mayweather Zab Judah fight. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so after that, after that, we were in court and uh, my lawyer presented the evidence and uh, said that my, uh, Glennis told me, Honor, well, what if I tell you that Mr. Spencer wasn't even in the state on this date said in question with, with him supposed to deliver some drugs? Well, how is that? Well, I got affidavits, uh, uh, rental car receipts, video cameras showing that Kevin Spencer was in Las Vegas. Woo, 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 woo. You know what I'm saying? So after that come out in court, they superseded my indictment, went and interviewed cats that was on my case in like 33. About 33 individuals made statements on me saying you know what i'm saying that they either bought drugs dealt with me with drugs seen me with guns uh witnessed me do this witnessed me do that or knew where i kept drugs or 33 people 33 individuals did you know them? most of them but not all of them that's how it is in the fed man especially if you're going through in a high prof profile case we probably we probably had one of the biggest cases that came through fort worth you know and, and with it being high profile like that with the case being high profile like that, people just jump on your case. You know what I'm saying? And so with, with that happening, with that happening, they was just, it was, you know what I'm saying? Even if you, if you don't know something, let, listen to what somebody's saying, then go tell them that, you know what I'm saying? So when, when, the, when the 33 people tell on you, that gives you more time in a federal penitentiary. That built my case. I never got caught with drugs in my life. You never Ever. got caught with drugs in your life? Ever. When they hit my house, they found a bunch of money. No drugs. Bunch of money, bunch of guns. But no drugs. I never got caught with drugs in my life. So I take that lie back, hold up. I got <laughs> caught with a blunt when I was uh, probably about 23. They used that to take my gun license. A blunt? A blunt. <laughs> so how do you, how do you get, how do you get 13 years and you never got caught with drugs or just people saying that you this guy they gave me a, a gang leader organizer mm. they gave me a leadership role uh, they said that uh, I had the authority over people to to make them do you know what I'm saying what I need them to do or what I want them to do well, well how so if 33 people uh, did that to you? I should have. You should have been right there with Glennis, and I asked them that when they did. <laughs> I, I was wondering the same thing. Yeah. Um. So they 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 do that. Now you that built your case. Yeah. You're you're. Did you get your sentence then? Nah. Then then. In that process, while they're building the case. In that process, it's like a year, year and a half. In a federal, in a federal court, you're supposed to be sentenced three, six. You're supposed to have your time pre sentence over there. about nine months, nine months tops. You're supposed to be already on your way to a forum somewhere. They drug my, they drug my case out. I was up between Mansfield, FCI Fort Worth, and Siegelville. I was in, in the rotation with them three for about like two years. Most of that, probably like a year or so of that in the in the hole. Before you got your time. Before I got any time. You said a year a year in the hole? Yeah, about a year and said. Can you explain what you mean when you say that? About a year being in my bathroom. Just in just that's it. Twenty three or what? If I wanna go outside, nine times ten I didn't go outside, I worked out in the cell. Why were you on lockdown for a year because uh, uh because this bro named Nikki said that I was calling threatening and sending threatening messages about who better not talk on me who better not say nothing they gave me uh witness intimidation and witness tampering 
He gave me an extra charge and took away my phone and knocked my visits down to like once a week. How oh, was and, oh, excuse me, I didn't mean to cut you off. And they gave me a, a four-man escort everywhere I had to go. Four people had to be with you everywhere you I go. I had a police in the front of me, police on the side, a police behind me. Four man <laughs> Why, man? <laughs> so, and this is before you get your time. Yeah, this is before I got any time. Like, do you feel like that was trying to break you mentally? Yeah, that's the that's, that's tactics. That's your tactics. First, you separate everybody. We good. Everybody together. We good. We can talk to each other. We can talk to each other. Nobody ain't did. Nobody told nothing. Nobody told nothing. Nobody said nothing. Spencer, roll them up. All right, what's up? Where I'm going? Oh uh, yeah, kid. You supposed to go to court in the morning for your bond hearing, boy. You might finna. They might give you a bond. You go. Ah, oh, yeah, that's good. Fool. Step out in the bean in in, in Sally Port in, in the county. And I mean in uh, in in Mansfield, it was like the the the, the dorm. Then uh, Sally Port, and then in the hallway. So uh, step out in Sally Port. I step out in Sally Port. They told me to pack my stuff. I drag my stuff out in Sally Port. Turn around, cuff up, cuff up. For what? One of the guards that I fooled with came and said, man, Spence, they said you. I say, for what? He said, I don't know, you supposed to go to court or anything? You know what I'm saying? They said it. This, I ain't never been locked up before. Never been locked up before? No. So when you turned yourself in, it's your first time being locked up? Yeah. I done been in jail, but I've never spent no more than, I never made it upstairs. Yeah. Never been locked, and I've been in jail a hundred times, but I never made it upstairs. I don't miss me except when I got into it with the laws. That bum was like 80 something thousand. I made that jump. Like, didn't even make it upstairs on that jump. Well, you, when you turned yourself in, I'm pretty sure you was mentally prepared for, did you expect what no. happened? You didn't even expect that. Nothing could have mentally prepared me for what I went through in that situation. The betrayal, the distrust, you know, the, 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 the not knowing, you know, I didn't know. I had never been locked up. I ain't never been locked up. But me, always being, being involved with the state, I'm, hey, Glennis, hey, come here. Well, Glennis took me down there and turned myself in. Why'd you turn yourself in? Because I had my kids, man. I had my you kids. You had a warrant out for your arrest? Yeah, they hit the house. They hit the house looking for me. I had a conspiracy warrant. So, yo, everybody get locked up. You one of the last people to get locked up. I'm not the last, but I'm one of the few. Everybody, they get everybody. I turn myself in that weekend. I stay out three, four days, then I turn myself in. And you didn't know that you was going to, what happened, was what what was going to happen, you had no idea to even mentally I had, prepare I, I for have, it. I, I could have never fathomed the things that, that, that transpired and took place in the games. That the, that, that the federal government plays. They, they, they use old war tactics. The federal government, the federal government is the most deadly gang that you can be in. If you don't do what they want, they'll go lock your mama up. They like, they, they, they rough in the mafia. Even the mafia didn't touch civilians. The federal government gonna get your mama, your sister, she got a car in your name. She ain't supposed to have that, tax evasion. The federal government is vicious, man. When it come down to us, you know what I'm saying? They're not vicious to everyone. When Did it come down to us, they vicious. When you, when you turned yourself in, that's when you, uh, you figured out what your charges were. I knew my charges. I knew what my charges were because I called home to check on, on, on my family. And when I called home, one of them answered the phone. Hello. Hey, Kelvin. You know you got a warrant. What kind of warrant? Conspiracy warrant for what? Conspiracy to sell cocaine, ooh, crack cocaine, basically. Man, I hang up the phone, take the take the SIM card out. Cause you remember back in the day, mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in 06, 05, when I got locked up, we had the little SIM card, yeah. it, it, we can't trace it. You know, you take that joint out yeah. through the phone or whatever. And uh, while they was out here, while they was out here, uh, I rolled by. Me and the little female that I was with, she brought me by her, we rolled by my house and seen them out here. <laughs> Then we went back to our house. I laid up. <laughs> so did you know, well you knew what you were in there for, um, you said two to three years before you got your time. Mm -hmm. And then when you got your time, is that when you found out that these 33 people had told no, you? No, you don't, you don't find out. You know, you hear whispers and, and my, my lawyer, my lawyer, my lawyer would come and be like, well, 
such and such such flip. I'm like for real? Yeah, well who you think? I said, nah, he, he solid, he, he on it. Well, such and such such flip. You know, so every time she would come, she was she was saying that that, that someone had an interview with the police, with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the case agent. Every time she would come. Every time she would come. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it finally accumulated about 33 people. And, and at first, I was going to still take them to trial. You know what I'm saying? So when I, I, I set up pre-trial, I'm finna get ready to have pre-trial. They brought all everybody back that made a statement on me. They brought them back and put them in the cell over there so I could see them. So you could look at them. If I can see them. And you knew that's what what, what it was when you. Because yeah, I'm finna I'm finna, I'm finna start my pre-trial. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they bench want everybody back. These cats on my case, they're all on the same caseload, but they already got their time. They gone. They don't hit their forms and they didn't hit their yards and everything. I'm still going through the the rigorous federal process. Hmm. So, where did you end up um, spending the majority of your time at when you got your time? What you mean? Were you? Uh, yes, sir. I spend the majority of my time in the, in the USPs and uh, not the not the 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 the, the, the max, but the uh, the maximum security. Not the where, where John where John got him him at and and the Unabomb and, and, and not there, but the one right up under, right under the USP penitentiary. Yeah. Did you know that uh, Tegan Broadwater was the the reason for this? Like I know, I really like I say. I really never knew that Tegan, because Tegan never played a part in me. Tegan never, Tegan and I have never had a had a conversation. Hmm. We've never had a conversation. So for him to feel like he feel about me, you know, that's that's I guess that's coming from the people that he's heard it from. But this guy's never 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 bought drugs for me. I've never entertained a, a thought. I've never sat down and talked to him or none of that. The snitch allegations um, that have been placed upon you, tell us where that came from. And how is that even possible when 33 people told on you? Man, just, and it's easy. It's easy for someone to believe something that want to hear something negative about someone, which I'm not tripping about that. And in that situation where that happened, niggas told on me, and then me trying to lie on niggas, because I've never got no drugs from now, nigga that was on, I dealt with essays. Now, nigga that was on our case, I never got drugs from. Now, nigga. And the niggas that I gave drugs to on our case didn't get locked up. Well, a couple of them did. Those are the ones that, that made the statement. The ones, the ones that I knew. The ones that was right there from the block. You know what I'm saying? So, I did what niggas did on me. The niggas that was jumping on, they lied on me. I lied on them. And, 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 and the niggas that, the niggas that I felt was telling on a nigga, was telling on a nigga, but a couple of them that I thought was, didn't tell on a nigga. You know what I'm saying? And that's the only thing I felt bad for. But these niggas, the the the, the Doughboys, the the Marcus Clarks, the 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 the, 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 the supposed to be killing niggas, they know y'all know they know what the business is. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't niggas lied on me, I lied on these niggas and I thought this nigga said something, but he didn't and that's what made me feel bad. Anything else? However nigga want it, we can do it. You know what I'm saying? They know that. Them niggas just throwing a rock, hiding their hand, they know that. You know what I'm saying? Does that, um, well, was this jacket placed on you while you were locked up? <laughs> yeah, and I'm at the penitentiary. Mm. Yeah. But see, niggas, my guys know what the business is and they knew to play. That's why I can walk in the yard. I walked in the yard. I never checked in or none of that. And I crossed some good guys that knew me and I knew they people and, and they like, yeah, kid, we know. We heard what happened. Hey, whoop, whoop. Nigga, I hit penitentiary. They try to hand me the keys to the car. 
Mm. I'm the nigga that that, that tell the Texas niggas, nah, we ain't we ain't got no we ain't got no car. Everybody got a vote. Ain't nobody running no car. Everybody got a vote. You a man, you gotta say. And if a nigga was in the penitentiary, me, they know that. So how, how long have you how long have you been home? I've been home about five years. How's it feel? Man, it's different. It's different. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed, man. I done been all over the world. In these five years since you've been back? Before I left. Before you. <laughs> <laughs> and since I've been back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I can't, I can't complain. Man, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. You, um, you have a book. Yeah. Explain to us, you know, about your book. Mm. The book is about me, about my life, about 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 the, the the investigation. You know what I'm saying? About how the feds operate. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to go get it too. It's on. Uh, it's on. Uh, <clears throat> what is that? It's on. Uh, is it Amazon? It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. It's not on audio book yet. I didn't want to do all that reading and all that, man. But it's on Amazon, man. Y'all go get it, man. Uh, Kevin Spencer, the Kevin Spencer story. That's what, what really it's called. Went on the yeah. Kevin Spencer story. What really went on Operation Fishbowl, so they say. You know what I'm saying? But uh, man, with that, with that, with 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 the the the, the storms that I weather in life, and, and 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 when I was locked up, man, it was just by the grace of God. You know what I'm saying? Like when I hit when I hit units, stand up guys were there that either knew me or knew of the situation or whatever had happened, and uh, they recognized the real when they saw it, and, and that's a blessing. But not to not to not to big up or, or, or minimize no, no role that no one played in my life if I had to stand up by myself. Without them guys, I'd have stood there. So you've been home five years. Uh, got your book. Um, let us let us check the book out, man. Oh yeah, man. It's it right here, man. The Kevin Spencer story, man. Check it out, fucking baby. That's yours. Keep that, man. That's yours. Oh, man. Thank I'm you, man. Sign it leave. Yeah, I see that right there. Yes, sir. Um. Well, we know what inspired this man, but uh, just just give us a brief summary of what the book is about, outside of being about you. But not just me, just just how how I mentioned I mentioned in the book how how the root of our indictment came from the Walmart and all that, the, the stuff that's built up there on, on Barry, the whole shopping center. Yes, sir, Mitchell Boulevard and Barry. Yes, sir, some investors came in before, I think early 2000, and went to want to put something there and investigators, this is what I, I've, I've read and, and what someone has told me also. The investors, it was a high crime area. Mm -hmm. So in, in order to get the investors, to get other investors, to invest in, 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 in what they were trying to do, they would they would uh, donate money to the police force to to to, to the uh, 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 I think Pop mentioned it uh, uh, zero tolerance mm -hmm. weed and seeds you know all that weed weed and feed, all that old you know what I'm saying and uh, and got so called you know on, on the front of uh, of Tegan book so called. 51 gang, deadliest gang members off the street. Most notorious. The most crips, notorious. 51 Crips. So. Yeah, 51 Crips. So, and that's, and that, that's, that's not true. What that investigation led to, it got some good men took away from their families. Got some, some bad men off the street for a while. I, I, I admit, I admit, some of, the, some of the cats, you know what I'm saying? The ones that told on the nigga. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, uh, <laughs> What they did, they got some low-level drug dealers off the street, and some greedy guys that 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 that, that put they, the, the 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 wagon before the horse. That's why they start. Who falls for someone buying trashy drugs for two or three times of what they're naturally worth? 
nobody but the police. Yeah. You know, I don't blame the, the cats on the corner that that that, that sold T the the hundred fifty the hundred pieces and all that for the other guy. I don't I don't blame them because they seen the guys that was serving them the two and three hundred grams, sir. So it's like these guys trick these guys into serving the guy because they fell victim of, of, of greed. And that's mostly our problem, you know what I'm saying? We can have too much, we can never have enough. Hey, real tone, it's a real money in the room.